How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the Conditional Shop Prices plugin from Yanfly. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can download the plugin. All you have to do is go to this page, go here, click download now. You can decide to donate if you would like to, but you don't have to. Click no thanks, just take me to the downloads and you will get the plugin. Once you have the plugin, you're going to go to your game, open it up, press game, open folder, go into your JS plugins folder, paste the plugin in here. You'll also need Core Engine and Shop Menu Core for this. I think you can get away without doing Core Engine, but I always recommend you use the Core Engine to fix some of the bugs inside the MV Engine. So we've got Core Engine, Shop Menu Core, and then underneath it we have Yep X Conditional Shop Prices JS. Easy enough. You open up your plugin manager. You put them in this specific order. So you have the core engine on the top, then you have the shop menu core underneath that, and then underneath the shop menu core, you can put the conditional shop prices. Let's open it up and take a look at it. You can um, adjust the parameters, but it's plug and play as long as you use these note tags. So you can adjust these if you want to. These are used to define the global percentages and the global price increase. So you're only going to have, I think, five or six note tags to to learn, so give the help file a quick glance before you start messing with it. It's very easy uh, to use plugin, but we'll go over them together. You can put these note tags on your item, weapon, or armor, and the first one we're going to look at is the base price variable. So you would use base price variable in the note box, and you type in a number here. You're not actually putting the price here, you're putting the number of the variable. This is going to give you the ability to manipulate that variable using any type of eventing you want to change prices. So this is going to set the base price of the item to whatever that variable is, regardless of what it's set in the database. The next thing is a percentage price variable. This is going to change the value of the item based on a percentage. So if you set the variable to 50, then it'll be 50% of it. If you set the variable to 1,000, then it'll be 10 times the value. And remember, we're not using a value in here. We're using the variable number that we want to manipulate here. So percent price variable, and we put in the number of the variable we're going to be manipulating. Increase price variable. This is just going to set an increase or decrease um, even if you're decreasing, you're going to use this increase price variable and then add a negative. Once again, you're not putting that number in here. You're putting the number of the variable you want to manipulate inside of this note tag. The next one is exact price variable, and you're probably thinking, why do I need an exact price variable note tag when I can just use the database? Well, if you have a lot of note tags on an item, at some point you may want to have an exact price variable if there's already a lot of modifiers on that item. So this you probably won't use very often, but there are niche cases where you want to have this note tag, so it's good that it's included. The next couple of note tags are a price minimum and a price maximum. This is a different type of uh, note tag than these other ones because the previous ones are looking for a variable number, but this, these two note tags are looking for specifically a price value. So this is setting a minimum and a maximum, and you put the minimum and the maximum in the note tag itself. So you can decide if they're already going to be randomized you, by some means, you can kind of clamp them so that you know that they won't go below this number and they won't go above this number but they will still be flexible and change depending on other things. Here's the order of the calculation. You can look at it. I'm sure you'll have to reference it over. You don't need to know it all off the top of your head and that's all there is to it. I'm going to give you a quick example of, of the project. Uh, I made a little sample map for you to see how you would use a plugin like this and then I'll also show you the events uh, that I set up in order to make this happen. It's very simple. So we're going over a town and we're going to open up a store and we see that we have six items here. We've got an apple of unknown age and it's cost, it costs 94 right now. The price on this apple will vary from time to time. So if we leave the menu and wait a second, we go back into the shop, we can see that now it costs 54. So the price is wavering and it's uh, changing based on our manipulation of a variable. So uh, I'll show you how to do that after Afterwards. Uh, so we have the next item, the cane of unwavering power. The base value of this item is a thousand. The value of this is 1230 now and it goes up and down. And now it's at 670. So it's based on a percentage, a variable that's changing every second, and it's um, picking a random number for that percentage. The tax coin, we're using the third one for this. This is, um, I'll show you in the database and then I'll show you all the events. 
Uh, this coin is base value is set to 100, but we're using another note tag to add a specific value of between 10 and 20. So every time we look at that value, it will be slightly increased because there's a random amount of tax being put on it. This one is a stack of 100 coins. It costs 100. We're using the note tag to specifically um, add 100 coins. I wanted to just use all the note tags. So here's an example of that. Easy. Let's skip to the next one. Uh, stable mushroom. The price fluctuates, but it'll never go below 75 or above 125. So it's using multiple note tags on this stable mushroom. So the price on that will be between 75 and 125 uh, every time. So it's 122 now. It could be anywhere in between based on the variables that are being randomized. The next thing to look at are, is the trade goods. Now this last item is how you would use this practically in a sim type of game to where you can buy goods in one spot and sell them in another spot. So you can buy here and sell here um, to make profit in like a Sid Meier's Pirates type of way. So you want to buy low, you want to sell high. We've got these trade goods here that they fluctuate in price a little bit. So they're at 470 now, but if we wait, they change in price right now it's 350 let's go ahead and buy as many as we many of them as we can so we can afford to buy 28 of them at 350 each and we take our trade goods and we sail across the map to another town or something it's a it's a short trip for the sake of this little tutorial but it could be as far distance as you want maybe the farther the distance the better the um, the profit margin and you can go here and you'll end up selling for a different price. So if we look at the price on the trade goods here, they're quite a bit higher. So when you sell them, you'll get more for them. Let's uh, wait a second and let the prices uh, randomize again. 1540, that's pretty high on these. So let's sell them right now while the price is high. So we can sell these 28 and now we have 14,000. That's 4,000 more than what we started with. So um, that's how you'd make profit on that. And we would take that money back to a place where they make this stuff for cheap. And you can even have stuff, and that's uh, another item in that store that sells for cheap, but um, you take it back here and they buy it for more money to incentivize the player to go back and forth. So we'd go here, we'd buy some trade goods. They're at 480. Let's wait a second and see if they go down in price. 350 again. All right, let's buy some more. You see what we're doing here. Now we can afford to buy 40 of them, and we're going to take these across to the other town and sell them for a huge massive profit buy them 1420 1420 got it okay let's sell all of them boom now we got 20 grand and that's how you would sort of do uh, that's how you would use this plugin to make sort of like a Sid Meier's um, Pirates trading game um, let's look at the database and how I've set that up. So here's the first one, the Apple of Unknown Age. It's a simple item, cost 100, and I'm using base pri price variable one. So I'm controlling the, the variable one to manipulate the price on that. The price on this will vary from time to time. The next one, this price goes up and down based on a percentage. So we're using percent price variable two, and, and we're manipulating that with a parallel. I'll show you next. This one, um, we're using increase uh, price variable three uh, for the taxed coin. So the coin is worth 100, but the price of it is more than 100 because it's taxed. You're paying a tax on it. So this is a stack of 100 coins. It's always worth 100 because we've set the exact price variable for. There are more cases where you use this in a better um, example than this, but it's pretty much it's there for certain cases. Um, stable mushrooms. The price fluctuates on this, but it'll never go below 75 or above 125. So here's an example of using multiple note tags. We've got four of them on this one. So we're using a percentage price variable to manipulate the percentage. The base value is 100. Um, we're increasing the price by a certain amount, and we're, we're saying that the price will never go below 75, um, they'll never, and the price will never go over 125. So this is an example of you can use multiple note tags in one item to to change things. And finally, the trade goods. This is using a percent price variable five, and you're wondering how is it changing between the two stores? Well, it's because we're using events to change it. So how would we manipulate a price? Um, we set it to this, and we're, we're adjusting the percentage with the variable number five. So all we have to do is change that variable number five. So right off the bat, we've got our ship, we've got our player, starting position, and we have an auto run. So at the beginning of the game, it auto runs, and we get 10,000 gold, turns on a self switch. So then we go to this page, which is a parallel. So now after we've got our 10,000 gold, it's just going to keep cycling through this every second because 60 frames in a second. So every second, it's going to uh, roll a random number for variable one, two, and three and set the price um, 
to be uh, on variable four. We could actually cut this and put this at the beginning because we don't need to keep setting the price. We're setting the value of, of four, uh, but I wanted to keep it in order to show you. So we're rolling a random number on these three variables every second of the game, not counting when we're in battle or in a menu. And we're rolling a random number between, oops, I press space bar, between 50 and 100, which you can change. We're rolling a random variable value between setting random 50 to 150. And we're putting a tax hike on something between 10 and 20. Just name your variables um, appropriately and you should be organized. And if you wanted to, to tick over every minute, then you would put in 3,600. Um, frames and run that as a parallel. I recommend if, you, if your game has more than one map, which it probably does, you probably want to put this on a parallel process event inside of a common event instead of on the map itself. Now as for how the price changes, when we go to this area, this town, we're controlling a variable when the player enters town. So right before they enter the shop, we're controlling the variable for variable number five to set the value of our trade goods. So right here in the database, we set it to a thousand. We know that it's going to be between 35% and 51% of its value. It'll be between 350 and 510 to the price to buy the trade goods. And when we sell the trade goods, unless you've modified it, you sell at half of the value. So when you go over here, we have to kind of change that quite a bit. We need to make sure that if, if we're going to let the player turn a profit, that the numbers are, are going to play fair for the players. You would just set this to a higher number. You would set it to random 102% to 201%. So this is saying when you come here, the value of the trade goods are between 1,020 and 2,010, but you sell at half price, right? So you know that the player will at least get their money back right here. Selling at 1,020 will give them 510 back which would be at the most what they pay for it at the other town. And then they have the chance to even double their money. So if the value is 2,000, then they would sell it for 1,000. And they would buy it for approximately 500 and sell it for 1,000, turning a profit on their, their trip. And of course, these numbers are arbitrary. You change them up to make them however you want. And you can put items at this town. So you're controlling multiple variables. You can handle all of your variable controls inside of a common event. And then you just call the common event every time you go to a town. So you'd make a town of um, the fishing town common event. And so you run the fishing town common event where it sets the price of the fish really cheap. And then um, it sets the price of like something else, bread, really expensive. And then you go over to the baking town where this, the price of fish would be really high, but the price of bread would be really low. And you can make the trading town work like that. So you just call a common event and it controls all the variables and you don't have to make a lot of, uh, of events on the map. Anyway, that's an example of how you would use this plugin and a quick tutorial on how you use it. Hopefully you guys like this tutorial. You like what I do here. If you do, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you'd like to support what I do, I have a Patreon page. Love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any special requests, put them in the comments. I would love to have you come hang out in the Discord. You can come promote your stuff there. Check out the latest gaming news. Talk about your projects. There's a lot of devs there. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.